What's up, everybody? I'm Hoops and Hip Hop, and welcome to the 30th episode of the Pokeblock Podcast. We've officially crossed over into the, the 30s of number of episodes. We're over half a year into this. It's absolutely amazing. I love how I just, like, revel about how long we've been doing this podcast every single week, even though it's, like, only a week more every time. I'm just I'm just so amazed. I, didn't, I, I don't know that I thought I would be doing this for six straight months, and now here we are. About to go into the new year, and we're still doing it. So, thank you so much for the support on this. Obviously, you guys have been crazy uh, with the support on the past couple episodes. I really appreciate it. it means the world to me. Uh, so, I'm really glad you guys are enjoying it. Uh, as we uh, approach the end of the year and we're getting into Christmas time, I really hope you guys are all having a great uh, holiday season. I hope you guys are enjoying time with your friends, your families, um, and I just really hope you guys. Uh, are just enjoying it. Uh, it's it's definitely a great time of the year, and not only is it a great time of the year because of the holidays, it's a great time of the year because of Pokemon. Obviously, Pokemon Sword and Shield just came out about a month ago, um, and we just got something else interesting announced that's Pokemon related literally yesterday as I'm recording this, um, and that is going to kind of be the focus of today's episode. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, right after the Game Awards concluded, oddly enough, I don't know if the timing, I don't know if that was intentional or whatever, uh, and thank goodness it, it did come right after the Game Awards, even if it wasn't intentional, because the Game Awards, if you guys didn't watch it, it was trash. It was, it was really, really bad, and it wasn't just because, like, they didn't announce, like, people wanted, like, Zelda to be shown off, people wanted to see, like, the fifth Smash Bros. character, neither of those happened, and it wasn't even because, like, people didn't get to see what they wanted to see, it was just, like, bad, like, they ended off the show, their big reveal was a Fast and Furious game that legitimately, based on the graphics, could be played on a PS2, it was that bad, it was legitimately that bad, it was, I, I honestly don't know what they were thinking, they probably got People were saying they probably got bribed from the Fast and Furious movies to show it and give it that exposure or whatever. But yeah, it was bad. It was awful. I hope, I hope they get flamed for it. Honestly, like big time, and then they come back and actually like fix their crap for next year because like they had they had like several good shows leading up to this, and this was the fifth year anniversary of the Game Awards like as a thing. So. I'm really, really surprised they didn't try to go all out for that even more so, and instead they took, like, five steps back. They went back to basically what it was at the beginning. It's like, you don't, like, they they finally have built this up to a point where it's, like, respectable and, like, people actually take it seriously, and then they went back to, like, just showing off, like, crap, basically. I mean, there were some good games that were shown off. They showed off, like, uh, they showed off the new Xbox, so that is a big announcement. Um, they showed off... Uh, Bravely Default 2 for the Switch, that is pretty interesting, they showed off a new trailer for Final Fantasy 7, the remake, uh, they showed off a couple other interesting things that are really cool, but for the most part, it was just kind of like, it was just kind of like a flat tire, like a big old fart in the face, it was, it was not very good, but with that being said, the reason why it was so just the timing was perfect for Pokemon to announce this because it kind of gave us at least something cool to end our night off with in terms of announcements was that they are going to be doing a uh, new anime series for Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, for for Pokemon. Like, we're, we're getting a new Pokemon Sword and Shield anime, but it's not necessarily the kind you think. First off, the name of this Pokemon Sword and Shield anime is called Pokemon Twilight Wings, which even that name alone gets me intrigued because a name like Twilight Wings sounds way, way more hardcore than Pokemon has ever allowed itself to be. Like, that sounds like, in terms of, like, anime... That's, like, a pretty, like, intense, like, legit anime-type name. And Pokemon, as far as being an actual anime, it kind of just dips its toe in the water as far as all of your stereotypical anime-type stuff 
that tends to go on because obviously it's more directed towards kids so you're not getting into the the real juicy stuff that a lot of people love anime for you're kind of just kind of dipping your toe in the water again so to speak so with a name like twilight wings it's like man that's kind of like extra anime for pokemon that's 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 how i feel so that gets me interested right off the bat secondly it's not like a full it's not going to be a full on anime series like uh like the main anime series and I am going to touch on that a little bit later just because we're talking about anime but essentially what this is going to be is it's going to be Pokemon Generation style if you remember <clears throat> a few years ago uh for the 20th anniversary of Pokemon uh they released these they did this, the short Pokemon Generation series which was essentially it was a series of short episodes the episodes were basically three to five minutes in length they released one every week on youtube so youtube was the platform they used to show it off and it basically ran every week until it was done and then it was done um and this is very much going to be the same thing it's also going to be uploaded to youtube and shown off on youtube and every single episode is going to be five minutes approximately and there's only seven episodes so it is sort of a limited short series uh, but the last time they did this with Pokemon Generations, it was pretty freaking awesome. Like, Pokemon Generations was fantastic and is what they need to do with the Pokemon anime going forward. And how they have not yet established that with the main series is beyond me. Uh, but yeah, that is what they are doing with Twilight Wings. Very comparable. Um, we, as far as like what the. We did get a little bit of details, we didn't get a lot. Um, but as far as kind of like what it's going to be revolving around and all that stuff, it doesn't have anything to do with, like I said, uh, the main anime series. So none of those characters will be in it. Um, it's unknown if we'll get any, I mean, I imagine we'll get like characters from the games and stuff in it, but it did say that it's going to revolve around basically like the people of the Gala region and their, their stories, their things that they have going on in their life. Um, and the other interesting thing about this is that we didn't get any like look as to what it's going to look like, but we did get a piece of concept art. And for being an anime, which is what it describes itself as, it looks very different to what you would expect an anime to look like based on that piece of concept art. It's very, very stylistic. It's very stylized even by anime standards. So I'm interested to see if it's going to be more anime like or if it's going to be kind of more of an artistic cartoon because right now the vibe i'm getting is kind of like a sort of like a what's the word ghibli like it's like it's kind of like ghibli-esque but just kind of like with that dial turned a little bit more to the maximum in terms of just stylization and it's got little it's got a little bit more of a cartoon flair to it it almost kind of like leaves that anime space in terms of style of animation and goes into a cartoon space but this is just all based on the this is just all based on the uh, concept art which could look completely different so i don't know i we'll just have to wait and see as far as when it comes out it's going to start coming out uh january 15th of next year or next decade i should say oh ha ha so long to wait i know right yeah yeah i'll, I'll leave now this is this is the last episode of the podcast guys as soon as as soon as the dad jokes start coming in that's that's when you know it's time to quit no just kidding i love you guys stay around um but yeah so january 15th next year five minutes long seven episodes i assume it's going to be one episode a week they didn't say that but I imagine that's what it's going to be, and we're just going to kind of take a tour around the Gala region, I guess. Um, I am personally really, really excited for this because, like I said, Pokemon Generations last, uh, last time they did this sort of thing was amazing, and I so desperately want to be able to, like, follow and get invested in a Pokemon show, like a Pokemon anime or something, but with the way they do the main anime it just it doesn't allow people who are like i mean i i can't speak for everyone but it doesn't allow for most people 
who are, I guess, my age demographic to really get into it. Because even though the games are appealing to all ages and they're, it's an all ages thing at this point, the show is still put towards uh, kids. It's, it's, it's directed more towards kids more so than anything else in the franchise, which personally I really don't get. It doesn't make any sense because they could very easily, a la Generations, make a show that appealed to kids just as much, but then was appealing to everyone else, just like the rest of the franchise, and it would be so much better. I would be able to get, like, so many more people would be invested in the anime, it would just be that much better if you did it that way, and it's not like you would lose the appeal or the interest from the kids, so I really don't know why they haven't decided to go that route, especially with things like Generations and Origins showing that there's a market for it, because those the videos that they've put up on YouTube for those things have millions upon millions of views, and everyone in the comments is just like, make these into a full series, please, so I don't know what they're waiting for, uh, but yeah, like I said, I these types of things kind of give me the opportunity that I don't normally get to enjoy to get invested in a Pokemon TV show. Even if it's just a five minute thing, even if it's just limited, it's only for a few episodes, it allows me to get invested into it, look forward to episodes every week, and it's so much fun. I remember just having a blast with this back during Pokemon Generations, and so hopefully this is the same thing like I said. We once again like don't know really like the anime style or anything like that. They're is kind of a we do, it's kind of limited on the information we know of but i based on kind of like what we've come to expect from these types of little short things from uh the pokemon anime and from pokemon themselves uh i have high hopes for it and in terms of like what we could potentially learn like obviously generation eight like the gala region is still very very new it's fresh and so there are still a lot of interesting things to be had in terms of like learning about Pokemon, learning about characters, learning about the region itself. And so I think because it's going to, the series is going to be going around highlighting just different people and uh, just kind of what is going on in their life. I imagine we could learn and get some kind of like interesting looks at some of the characters in the region or, uh, or some of the interesting points of the region itself and get some really cool stories that are told. So I'm really just really interested and looking forward to that. And so I will really be uh, following this series heavily. And I, I don't know what day January 15th is. I'm going to look that up right now, actually. Um, I would assume it's a Friday. Uh, where is it? Where is January? Okay, here's January. No, so January 15th is a Wednesday. So with it being a Wednesday, if they were to do it every Wednesday, we could kind of have a segment on this uh, on this podcast where we talk about the episode the following Friday. So it's two days later, we kind of do a recap of the episode, which would be a ton of fun. So hopefully that remains the case. I remember Generations did it every Friday, but if they do it every Wednesday, which is what the first episode is going to be at least, that is something we could definitely do, which would be awesome. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm basically looking really, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Really excited to see what comes of it and all it has to offer. So moving on from that, since that's, that's basically really all there is to say there, I did want to get into the actual anime for a little bit, because if we're talking about anime, we might as well talk about the main series, and I haven't really touched on that at all, as I've been talking about the actual games and stuff like that, uh, but the actual anime itself has just barely kicked off. It's, it's a few weeks old at this point, at least in Japan. It's not going to come to America or like the West for a while, because it's got to get translated and stuff, but... Um, as far as the anime, because like I, like I just said a few minutes ago, the main series has always been more directed towards kids. I've never really been able to get into it. And th to its credit, I will say, even though it's still very much that way in terms of its 
demographic it's targeting and the look and feel of it and all that stuff, it is going for a really interesting angle because as you might have heard, it's obviously Ash and his new partner, Go, that he's traveling with, his new travel companion. Uh, they're traveling to every single region. So the, the series is going to take place across every region as opposed to just Galar. And that obviously is going to allow for a whole new scope of things to happen, um, which is really interesting and cool. So like that, that really opens up a lot of possibilities uh, in terms of obviously like you could get new characters that return, you could bring back like old evil teams, uh, which would be really, really cool. Um, and then they've even shown off like legendaries that are already popping up, like Lugia pops up in like the second episode or something like that. It's crazy. So I haven't seen any of the episodes myself because once again, they're only in Japanese at this point. Um, and they're probably, they're probably, du or not dubbed, but they're probably subbed somewhere. But I, I gotta tell you, I'm not a fan of subbed anime at all. I don't like it. Um, I know that's like exact opposite of what most everyone else thinks, but A, I don't like having to read the subtitles because then you just end up reading the whole time and you're not actually watching the show. So that's a huge detractor for me, first off. Second off, even though I haven't like, watched a ton of actual like uh subbed anime that's direct from japan the stuff that i have seen and i'm probably gonna get flamed for this but this is my genuine honest opinion the i, I don't think like I don't think it's made nearly as well in terms of like the music that's put on the sound effects all that stuff like i've watched a few episodes of several different series that are subbed, so I've watched the actual Japanese episodes, and every time, no matter what series it is, the music is always way off in terms of the emotion it's supposed to be portraying in that moment, like, it, the music never fits the moment, the sound effects and all of the foley, which is a audio term for human-made sound effects, because, yeah, that, that's a thing, so basically just, like, all of the, all the sound effects and different things like that that are supposed to make the, the scene come alive, basically, they just feel super off to me, and they felt that way every time I've tried to watch a Japanese episode of, of any anime, whether it be just regardless of the series, and so every time that happens, in addition to having to just read the, what they're saying the whole time in the subtitles, it just feels completely, I, I don't feel immersed into the into the show at all. It, it feels very apparent that I'm watching a TV show as opposed to getting enraptured in the story and what's going on. So I know that's like going to be opposite to what everyone else thinks, but yeah, like I absolutely prefer dubbed anime over subbed anime for that reason. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm not a giant anime watcher in general, so like you don't have to like kill me because it's like, I don't really, I'm not really, like, huge into it, I guess, one way or another. Like, I, I like anime, but I don't have, like, a ton of shows I'm following all the time or anything like that, so it's whatever. But basically, I haven't seen any of the episodes yet, but the clips and stuff that I have seen, there's some things going on, like, Ash and Go, they're running into legendaries, they're traveling all over the Pokemon world. That premise gives this series some promise. Um, the other thing I really like about the series is the character design. We've only seen a couple new characters. We have Go, obviously, and then we have, I believe her name's Kohiro. It's the daughter of the new professor that's kind of like the professor in this game, or in this uh, show. Um, and the character design for these characters is absolutely on point. It's it's really, really good. The, the new characters look really well put together and they look really interesting looking so that's another thing I really like about this series um the only thing that I don't really like is the animation style the animation style is still pretty identical to what it was in sun and moon it is a little like it is tweaked a little bit more so it's not quite as just like purely goofy and just like I guess like cartoony like there is a little bit more of a of a 
of a traditional anime flair to it as opposed to what we had in Sun and Moon, but it's like, I would say it's like 80% of what was in Sun and Moon, and I absolutely hated that animation style. I did not like it, or the art style, if we want to get technical, did not like it at all. So that kind of detracts it for me a lot, especially because I know, once again, it is going to be more appealing to kids, and it's just, it's just going to be like... Like, it's not going to, like, take itself seriously enough. So the fact that it's, like, that art style is a little more kiddish on top of that, it just takes me out of it. But when we finally get English episodes, I, I, I'll i give it a shot. I'll try it. Um, I don't see myself watching the Japanese episodes, but there is a lot of potential with this series. And so hopefully it can do something good. Hopefully this uh, Twilight Wings episode or series can be awesome and live up to its predecessors in Origins and Generations. And I think one more thing I guess we could talk about as we sort of round off this episode of the podcast is why would they call it Twilight Wings? Like, Twilight, that's a very, very specific name. Like, that is a very specific name. Like, with the previous with the previous series, you had Pokemon Origins because it was a anime portrayal of the origins of the series with the events of red and green version and it was very true to those events and then you had pokemon generations which was a series about things that had happened across all of the different generations of pokemon so it was very appropriate twilight wings could be anything like we don't have like naturally you would think like a bird pokemon like it could be about a legendary but in the galar region where this special is focused we don't really have a legendary pokemon that has wings we have a total of three legendary pokemon uh two of them are wolves and don't have wings and one of them is a giant space dragon who i guess technically has wings but like He's like this evil, like, dark, menacing space monster type of dragon, so Twilight Wings doesn't really describe him in any way, shape, or form, so I'm not really sure what they're going for with that name, but I have no doubt whatsoever that there is a very specific thing that they're going for, because... Like, even with, even with it being anime, you don't just slap a name like that on your show and call it good. Like, it's got to have some meaning. You're not just going to give your whole series a name that has no meaning. So, uh, I'm sure it'll kind of be revealed as time goes on what that meaning is about, and I'm really interested to see, because like I said, that name is more kind of uh, anime-esque than anything we've ever had for the Pokemon anime, so I'm I'm really interested to just learn more about that alone, and um, I'm also interested to see if this is going to be like a continuation sort of series, because with Pokemon Generations, every episode was its own thing, because obviously it was going from generation to generation, and different event to different event, and it was kind of just, each episode was its own thing, so it didn't really, like, continue or build up a story, so I'm really interested to see if this one builds up a story at all, um, because it's all in Galar, it's all in one region, I, I, that could be possible, but I also could see it kind of just being its own thing, just based on the nature of the series, and based on the fact that it's focusing on, like, the stories of the people of the Gala region, like, we're not really following one protagonist, it doesn't sound like, so, overall, I mean, like, regardless of which way it goes, if it's, like, a one-off for every episode, or if it's a continual story, I just, I'm, I'm just really interested either way, and like I said, I'm really interested to find out what that Twilight Wings, uh, name means maybe maybe right at the end of the ep or right at the end of the series for the last episode twilight wings is going to refer to a brand new mythical pokemon and it'll come out and that's how they'll reveal it that would be dope uh because not only would that just be a great way to reveal a pokemon but also if you've if you've been listening to me and like my videos and my podcasts and all that stuff if you've been following me and my content lately i've been talking about the fact that there's no new mythical pokemon in generation 8 as of right now and there's not even one to be data mined whatsoever like we've had in the past couple generations which is 
starting to lose my voice here, but uh, that's very strange for Pokemon because they always have mythicals to distribute. They always have mythicals in general, and the past couple generations, they've had them in the games, like the data of the games. So even though they haven't been revealed right away, they've still been there and we could still tell that they were coming. Uh, this generation, we don't have that. So it's kind of a wait and see sort of situation, which is really, really interesting. It makes you think, because you couldn't possibly imagine that they they just wouldn't have any mythicals in this generation. <clears throat> so if they are going to have a mythical, it kind of makes you wonder, like, what makes this mythical so important that it's, like, completely not even in the game's data at all? Do they just, have they kind of finally wised up to people data mining the game so they're protecting the reveal of it? Or is it just that much more important and they're doing something special with it to the point where they've like uh intentionally taken it out of the data of the games no idea obviously we're just gonna have to wait and see but maybe this twilight wing series could connect to that that'll be really interesting to see but with that being said since i'm clearly starting to lose my voice apparently i i think i still have like lingering effects of a cold i had several weeks ago and so when i talk for a half hour straight my voice kind of chokes up a little bit but yeah i'm starting to lose my voice a little bit so i think now would be a good time to call it since we're about to our time anyway but with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed as always thank you so much for listening thank you so much for your support over the past couple weeks as i said earlier absolutely amazing i really hope you guys are enjoying your holiday season um obviously i'll be back next friday so be sure to subscribe or follow wherever you're at you can also follow me on my own channel for more pokemon content all the time if you're interested in that and haven't done that yet as well and with that being said i'll be back next friday with another episode so with all that being said hope you guys have a great week i love you all and until the next one as always i will smell you guys later